today we have painter master Marilyn Sholin with us. And this is very exciting because she actually just let me know our topic is easy cloning, that she helped to develop the new clone source panel in Painter 12. So that was a new tidbit of information for me, and she's going to be the perfect expert to guide you through that today. And so with that further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Tanya. Well, hi everyone, and thank you so much for registering and for coming. And I did see a previous registration list, and I see a lot of my old friends, so I just want to give a shout out. Um, thank you for coming, and thank you for following me again, and for going on this little journey. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the clone source panel. I'm just going to close this. This little warm-up painting I did that we'll talk about later. But I wanted to tell you first about how I work. And you'll see my screen here. I keep things very KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So I don't like to have a lot of my workspace taken up with unnecessary things. And I only keep open what I really need to keep open. So I'm going to start here. These are the only things I'm going to have open. I'm going to have my colors. And of course, we're talking mostly about clone paintings today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the rubber stamp. I'm going to have the clone source panel open, but I'm going to show you how that will open automatically when we get um, to the cloning. Uh, I have layers open, and I'm not going to work in layers today, so I'm going to be closing that. But I did want you to know that that is one of the panels I usually have open. And I have my navigator open. So I keep things very clean. I don't like a lot of shortcuts, and people have asked me about this. Do I like, why don't I use shortcuts? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, it's just as easy for me to get to it quickly by going to it, whatever I want to do, and keep my screen clean. And the second reason I don't use shortcuts is because I teach so much. And if you only learn the shortcut, you don't learn how to really get there. OK, the first thing I want to be sure that you have all set for your clone painting is you need to go into your preferences. And yes, I am working on a PC. And I'll just get the PC Mac question out of the way right now. I do know how to work on a Mac. I have owned Macs. But PC is what I was brought up on. I travel all over. And for me, working on a PC, I know the product inside and out, and I know how to get the answers for anything that happens. So when students come and they are working on a Mac, it's not a problem. It's just that I am accustomed to working on a PC. So everything I'm talking about today is on the PC. So I need you to go to your preferences. And in the PC, it's under Edit Preferences. And I'm going to go to Quick Clone. And on the Mac, it's going to be under the words Corel Painter. So that will be where your preferences are. And I'm looking for this, the Quick Clone. I want your panel to look like mine. Close the source images, not clicked. You want to open the Clone Source panel. So every time that you clone, you will open the Clone Source panel. Clear the canvas, turn on the tracing paper, and do not have clicked switch to cloner brushes. Because any brush that you use can be a cloner brush. So this is how your preferences should look. And this is in your quick clone. So I'm not going to waste the time to go through the general preferences. Um, I'm sure you all have that, and you can all get that. But since we're talking only about clone painting, I want to cover that. So we're going to go OK. So my clone source panel is already open. I'm going to talk to you for a second about what I have here. I have created a set of cloner brushes. And some of these are blender brushes. But they're a set of brushes that will be available. Uh, they're going to be, it's free. You will go to mydigitalpaintingshop.com to download the awesome thing, one of the awesome things that's in Painter 12. And one of the big reasons for just going ahead and upgrading to Painter 12 if you're not is the installation of brushes is the easiest thing ever. When you download my brushes, all you're going to have to do is double click it, and they will go right into Painter. 
no more installing brushes on the back end, having to go around, having to make folders, having to make sure you have the JPEG. It all installs so quick. The brushes, the way they work in Painter 12 now are just amazing. Now, the brush set that I have in here, um, I'm going to go through most of these brushes today. We'll talk about them so that you can see what we're doing. But my important thing is that I want you to get good workflow for the Clone Source panel. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up something that will show you something fairly amazing. And I worked on something earlier today for you. And then I saved it. And I wanted you to see the goal of how our clone source panel is going to look. And this is just a RIP file that's open, but these are my clone sources up here at the top. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get there. And then at the bottom it shows any other images that I have open, and it shows the one that I'm painting on. So you can choose to paint on any one of these. So let's go ahead and start one of these from scratch. I'm going to close that up. And let's go ahead and open up uh, Italian Boats for Hire. OK, I have to tell you that year before last, I went to Italy. And I took a group of workshop students there. So a lot of my pictures are from Italy. And this September, with uh, Jonathan Starling from North Carolina with his um, tour company, we are going to Italy again. We're going to Venice, Verona, and Florence. And that is all up on my Facebook page right now. I have to get it in the paint shop. But um, we're only taking 10 students, and we expect it to be sold out. We just announced that we already sold three spaces. So we're pretty excited. OK, this is step one. Open your image. OK, when you go to File, Clone. We're going to do clone first. What happens is the image comes up now, your clone, with untitled and a number on it. And forget about the number reference. Sometimes it's just how many times you've been opening the image or playing and painter. I am not the technical person, so I don't worry about these things. I worry about my painting. So over here you see that I have Italian boats for hire. And down here, in your little bottom panel, it says Untitled 3. Now that can be very confusing, because it doesn't really tell you it's the one you're painting on. So here comes your workflow. This is, this is a really, really great way for you to be working and to not be confused. The first thing I do after I've cloned my image is I go to File, Save As, and I immediately create a new folder for this painting. So new folder, and the name of this image is Boats for Hire. So I'm going to retype, rename this folder. OK, let's call it Boats for Hire underscore. Here's the important part. Write the word painting. Now save the image like this. So I open the folder and I'm changing this file name. Boats for hire underscore painting. And I am saving it as a rip. You definitely want to save it as a rip. And those of you that have taken classes from me before know that I never saved as a rip before. This is the time you save it as a RIP, and I will explain this to you. Go Save. Look at your bottom panel. It should be saying Painting. There it is. OK, Ports for Higher Painting. OK, it just took a second to change there. OK, now you know this is the one that you will be painting on. You will have no confusion as to which is the one you're supposed to be painting on. Now, this has happened. So many times in classes, I can't even tell you. People don't know that they're painting on the wrong image. So now that it's marked paintings, you know this is the one that we're going to be doing. Now, let's say we want to open some other sources.
that we maybe want to bring some other sources in. And this is what I wanted to show you. First of all, I'll go to open source. Your sources need to be the same size and the same shape as your original one that you're working on. So that you can get an idea, let's open up some colorful things here. Let's open up the roses and let's open up the sunflowers. And these are picked intentionally so that it's easy for you to learn this lesson. So neat thing is, look right here, you can see your pictures. Isn't that cool? You see everything right there. The top is your source. The bottom is your painting. So I could paint on anything that's in here, but the one that's checked is the one I'm painting on. So let's take a look at some of these brushes and start playing. Now this is clone painting, and then I'll show you quick clone. Now, these are some of the brushes that I've put together here. Some of you have some of these brushes before, and um, I do a lot of tweaking up brushes. So you'll see in here, one of the brushes is it, my initials, but it's actually Skip Allen's Big River brush. And those of you who follow along with Skip and all of his brushes, which are amazing, um, will know that you can just go to his blog, Skip Allen, Skip Paints, I think it is. And uh, it's really easy to find. So I'm going to pick this brush right now. I have tweaked this brush to what I want it to do instead of what Skip had it set at. So I am set right now that my source is set on sunflowers. So let's see what happens. I'm going to start bringing this in. Right, maybe we'll use this one. There it is. OK. I switched it over to the pink so it'd be easier to see. Now see, it's actually drawing from there. Over here is where you toggle in your tracing paper. So you see, this is what my source is. It's there. Now if I go to there, that's my source. And if I go back to my boats for hire, that will be my source. So then if I use this brush, it will just be doing the water. So I know that there has been a lot of confusion about this clone panel. And this will keep you organized. This will keep you from painting on the wrong painting. And you will always know the bottom that you don't even have to look at, that's the one you're painting on. The only other thing you have to worry about is up here at the top, being sure that you have all your clone sources in there. Now, let's say I wanted to open up another clone source. I want you to notice one thing. When I open from open source, you don't see the images here. See? They're not here. Let me just minimize that. See? They're not hidden here, but they're in the panel. But if I wanted to go to File, Open, and open up another one, then it will open in here. So I would have to bring this forward, go down to here, where it says now the um, boat colorful, and click on that, and it will bring it into my clone sources. But that, because I went to File Open, that's why you see that on my screen. If I brought it in by just going Open Clone Source, my screen would not be bothered by having all these images open. And this is another thing that is so wonderful about this upgrade to Painter 12. I am all about desktop space and real estate and keeping things as simple as possible. So I'm going to, just to prove this to you, I'm going to turn that off. That was Skip's Big River. Let me go to, um, this is one of the most popular brushes. Uh, the Marilyn Messier brush is based on the famous Dens brushes. And I have actually met Denise in London. And she, Denise Laurent, and she is wonderful. And this was a set of brushes made years ago. And everybody always loves these brushes. Um, I tweaked this up for my own use. 
and I actually heard from Den. She said, I like what you did to my brush so much that I paint with your brush more than mine. So that's, that's just like the highest compliment because she did this amazing work on the brush. So see, we're bringing in both colorful, and that's because that's what the clone source is. If I switch to sunflowers, we're going to get the orange. If I switch to the rose, we're going to get the pink. So the concept here is that all of this is going to stay together. So the important part is that you see them all in your panel. You can always click here so that you know which one you're on. If you're not sure, you can always toggle your tracing paper so that you can see here. And if you wanted to paint on something else, you could also bring something else up to paint on. Well, let me show you a little bit more about these brushes. So I'm going to go back to using the original here. So you all know the Mara Messier brush. It's going to go ahead and toggle that off. It's going to go ahead and you know paint from the original. And I have it set fairly large here. I have in the set of brushes that everybody has from the standard set is the soft cloner. So soft cloner will bring back the original, of course. But when you're clone painting, you always need to have your soft cloner brush and have it handy. Marilyn. We have a yes. question from Bruce, and he is wondering, can you resize and or move your clone source image that it'll, so that it'll fit in the location that you'd like in your painting? You would have to probably do some what's called offset clone painting. And I always work the easiest way possible, and I always make sure that I resize everything to be the same size. And I always recommend to people, work easy. Do it the easiest way. If you know that you're going to have five sources, keep all five sources the same size and the same resolution and in the same direction. Um, you're, you're just trying to complicate things by trying to paint from something not the same size. Thank you. So, I'm, I, like I said, I am all about keeping the whole process simple. All right, this is a, um, a messy dry brush. And this brush is, I have a lot of brushes in here that are very cool for doing backgrounds. And this one has some little sort of, I call it like paw prints. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. It does some neat things to the background here. So you can see what that one's doing. And then I have this one, which is one of my rough-up brushes, which gives you a more textured look to the background. And what's really fun to do is to take out all of these details and then just keep the subject matter. So I'm talking about keeping the boats here. And the same thing we would do for people, take out the, that part. Okay, my Mare Soft Sarge is a, a really great brush. It is not really controllable, so I sort of like the surprises I get in it. And um, if you play with this brush, I have found students absolutely love this brush. And it gives you really painterly look to what you're working on. And just resize it. You, work with this brush in short brush strokes. I'm going to be doing a video that will explain all of these brushes and the little tricks that I use with them. Um, we talked about the Mara Messier. This one, did, this one does a very cool background also, the Impressionist brush. It actually puts an Impressionist background in, like almost immediately. And look at that. And this is all on the regular clone painting. And I'm watching the time, and I'm going to switch over to quick clone painting and show you some tips for that and a little trick on that when you set that up. But I want to show you one other brush here, and it's the scrubby rut. And when this brush starts out, I'm going to go into the, the boats here, it doesn't look like much. See, it really, it doesn't look like much. But that painting that was up at the beginning 
This is my image of the Venice Small Canal. Okay, that was the image. And this is the painting I did. I just did this as a warm-up for this webinar. And this whole background is done in this brush. And I think that just came out so cool. So I just want you to see again. Um, what you see the brush doing, you have to hang with it and let it finish doing its work. And then I went in with Skip's brush here at the bottom for the water. And then on the boat, I used my Mare Soft Sarge and brought that out. And I did that last little trick, if you don't know about it, is equalize. Before I finish my paintings, I always go to Effects, Tonal Control, Equalize. And you will see totally different colors. Well, everything will pop on your painting. And I'll do it on this one just to give you an idea of the difference. So you can see, although this painting obviously isn't finished, so you will see the difference here. Effects, Tonal Control, boom, Equalize. Equalize is the magic. You do this at the very end of your painting. And now you have control with your black and your whites, where you want them, and your brightness, whether you want it darker or lighter. And I'm just going to go, just to show you, I'm going to go, OK. That is with equalize. That is without. This is it, it, so important to learn to use because it pops everything back out. Okay, we're going to do, um, do we have questions, Tanya? Yes, um, and I can't believe I forgot to ask you this, but what, are you using a graphics tablet, and if so, what kind? Oh, okay, I am using a Wacom. Um, I am on a Wacom 4, and I, I like the feel of this. Uh, I don't like a wireless. I have tried the wireless ones. This is just my own personal preference. And again, I keep things very simple. I don't have all these controls set for a million different things. Uh, what I want to do is just paint. I have, a, I have something I always tell people. I don't want the technology to get in the way of the creativity. If I have to think about things too much, then I stop thinking about painting. I'm thinking about technology. And I love the feel. And people ask me this, which, um, which nib I use. I have tried all the nibs on the Wacom pen. And the original one is the one that I use. I don't, so I've tried every single one, the one with the spring, the, the, all of them. And for my brush stroke, and I think that's what it comes down to, how you handle the brush, that's the nib that works the best for me, and I have the most control. So um, also just to answer, because somebody's going to ask, yes, I did own a Cintiq, and I sold my Cintiq. And I don't use a Cintiq because the way I like to paint is I like to sit in a chair that is a large desk chair. It has arms. I sit back with my tablet in my lap so that my back is supported and my arms are supported. And I found that working on a Cintiq, I was leaning forward too much and I was lifting my hand too much to look at the image. Um, I, I appreciate the technology of the Cintiq. It's really fantastic. And people that like it, I mean, I just have a back that needs to be sitting back. <laughs> That's all. So any other questions before I go on? Sure. And while you were talking about nibs, this is a question about the painter pointer and how you change it to a different symbol. Or, you know, the brush tip. Um, the icon? And, yeah, the preferences. OK, right. Preferences in general. OK. It's going to go into interface. And I like to always see what brush I'm actually using. I like to see the shape of the brush. So I am set Brush Ghost and go OK. And Brush Ghost is why you're seeing my brush shape. Now, I like to see this because I know that if I see, if I see that specifically, if I see the square, 
I know that's a messier brush, and I don't want to be on that brush. So I know immediately that I picked up the wrong brush. So it's just one of my little ways of knowing these things. So that's how you pick up brush poses. Now this painting actually is coming together in a very interesting way. So I think before I start showing you the quick clone, and I know we're going to go over the half hour, but I would really like to do this, I want to show you how to save this and that that's what the magic is in this. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Now, it's set as RIP file. You want to save this as a RIP file. And I'm in my folder that says Vote for Hire. Okay? Now, I always add something to the end, so this is my second one. So I added two. And I'm going to close this. Now, let's go back and open that. See what happened? All my clone sources are there. But look, you don't see them. Nothing's taking up my screen. I don't have to have everything open. I can have whatever I want, and they're all right in here. And that's why you save it as the RIP. Now, this time, let me show you what happens. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And let's say I'm done. I'm finished with this painting now. So I want to save it as a JPEG. Now, I save all of my paintings as a JPEG. Everything prints in my lab as a JPEG. The only time I would save as a PSD is if I had a layer. And I wanted to save the layer right then. So let's go to JPEG, and I want you to see what happens when I go to save this. I go save, boom, you get a little sound comes up, and you get a screen warning. And the warning is telling you the clone source images are not preserved, meaning these will not be preserved. So if you want to preserve these, you save it as a rip. The nice thing is this means you can be working on multiple paintings and you never have to go look for those clone sources to open them all. You used to have to go open every clone source and go find them. So this is such a time saver. So now I go OK and the JPEG screen comes up and people always ask me, do I save it as excellent? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I want the best, right? So I save it as excellent. I don't touch anything else, and I just go OK. And now I've saved it. See, it changed up here. Saved it to a JPEG. So this, when I close it and reopen it, will not have the clone sources. Let's open up the JPEG and see. Clone source is empty. No clone sources there. Well, I want to. I'm going to take a few extra minutes and steal them from Tanya. And I want to show you one of the tricks on the quick clone also. So let me, let's go to open. And let's open up this gentleman. OK. So we have our violin player here. And now this time I'm going to go to file quick clone. And I'm going to minimize the original because I don't really need to see it. Now, notice that it is a white screen here. I'm going to give you a little trick here that a lot of people don't know about. Let's say I want to flood this with a color. I don't want to be using that white. I want to instead be able to just work around it and let a color work into the background. So I'm going to get the bucket tool down. I'm going to make sure at the top of the screen current color is picked so that I can go ahead and pick a color. And I'm going to pick something, uh, let's see, uh, let's, just, let's not make a lot of difficult decisions here. Let's just go with something a little bit on the dark side. Now all I have to do is touch my pen to the tablet. And see in the navigator, that's actually what's there. But because I don't have this toggled, I can see him. OK, trick right here. Very important. Go to 
canvas, you'll see tracing paper is already clicked. Set paper color. Okay, that's your next step. Set paper color. And I am going to show you what this does. Because a lot of people don't know about this. I'm going to go ahead and pick up, um, let's pick up uh, the smushy brush that I have. You see it's already set on clone. And let's just go ahead and paint a little bit here. All right, so it's very mushy, but when I go look, I've gone overhead. I take my Wacom pen and I turn it over so that I'm using the back the eraser and I can get rid of that. If you do not click set paper color, it will only erase to white. So that's under canvas, set paper color. After you do the step that you dump the color in, that's when you go to canvas set paper color. And this is just such a great trick to know. So many people don't know about doing this. So I'm going to just turn him on so we can see him a little bit. Um, this is a nice little background color. And what I want you to notice is that some of the brushes in this set are just blender brushes. And they will not do anything but move things around. So let's look at, and I think this is one right here, this textured fan blender. Okay, see this is just going to move that around, but if I try to paint, it will not bring it through. It's only going to work on the paint that you've already worked with, which gives you some nice, nice interesting things to do here, that you can have multiple textures on top of your image here. This is that Mixer Impressionist that I think is just amazing. It just does an impressionist painting in no time. And then to paint him, and I'm going to bring him out there, there's a really nice brush in here. Um, I took the captured bristle and I did some interesting changes to it. And and it's not painting on him. It should be. All right, I'll have to look at that one. I know the reset is down because it's set as a blender, so that's why. But this will bring him in nicely. Um, Captured Bristle is one of your strongest brushes you can ever use in Painter. You can change this brush a hundred different ways, probably a thousand different ways, and just paint with this one brush. So that's what I've made some changes to this brush today. When the reset is at zero, it's a blender brush, as I'm sure you all, most of you know. Um, these are all reasons for, see, that I would bring back some detail. And like I said, I have the soft cloner brush in this set. And the reason I put that in there is not because I don't think you know about it, but because when I'm working in a brush set, it's so much easier to have all the brushes in one place. I like, I like to not have to go to any other brush set. So it's fun to have brush sets for different things, but then you know you're going to have to bring in more detail. And then I could go back. And notice here one other thing. Um, I do have very specific preferences that I use. I only use this top screen for the most recent brush. I do not use the one that shows up over here. I also don't use the brush tab looking at that. And again, for me, it's all about the real estate and wanting to save that. And I'm going to bring in, so we do this, let's do, an, oh, let's do an open source. And I'm going to bring in that Venice painting. Oops, we forgot to title this. OK. So now that's available as a clone source there. So I'm going to check. There it is. It's right under there. And you'll see now I'm getting that blue in. That's actually from the boat painting, the canal. And remember, if you don't like something, you can turn your pen over because you set the paper color. 
So it really gives you some good options here. So I hope this has helped you. Um, the only step I miss doing here is see it still says untitled. I got all excited when I was watching the clock on the time is to go file, save as, and create a new folder. And violinist. But what will happen is everything will save everything together then. And then go into that folder and change this to violinist painting so that we know that we're painting on the right one. So it's a couple of really simple steps for going and using as many clone sources as you would like to use and for finding your clone sources. So if you wanted to open up other clone sources, you would just go to open source. I find that good workflow is to have all your clone sources set up before so that you're ready to open them in Painter and not to be searching around looking for other sources. That's part of your planning to have your painting done. That's just part of, you know, normal kind of working with your painting. Um, there are, although you will be able to download all these brushes in the digital paint shop when you get the email from me, uh, I will give you some tips on these brushes also, on things that I use them for and which ones work the best, what will work on layers, which one will not work on layers. So there will be a little tip sheet that comes with that. And uh, I will have a new um, video also up in the digital paint shop uh, that will relate more to the clone painting and to more details. One of the things I wanted to mention is on Facebook, because people do ask me about this, Unfortunately, everyone likes my personal page on Facebook, and I have reached way beyond my number of people. If you want to be connecting with me on my personal page, what you need to do is click subscribe, and you'll find that on your page. But if you would like to connect with me on my business page, it's Marilyn Show and Fine Art, and I'm going to be putting more and more work on this page. And as those of you who have been following me know, um, I'm also doing a lot of wet painting. And for those of you who used to do wet painting and you've given it up for digital, you might want to consider getting back to it a little bit because what I found is that doing the wet painting has freed me up digitally. In other words, it's actually let me come back to digital and not worry so much about the details that you sort of get the feeling again that just work through the mistakes and enjoy the process. And I find it's made me much more creative also.